Hi everyone, this lesson is for Algebra 2 Honor students. This is chapter seven, day five. Um, graphing polynomials with multiplicity, zeros, and behavior, and something new, uh, intermediate value theorem. So learning targets go over what I just said, basically graphing polynomials with multiplicity, remainder theorem, uh, talk about the fundamental theorem of algebra, and a zero, talking about our zeros, and also um, nth degree polynomials, and possibly even linear factors, and knowing that in n, how many terms a polynomial has based on the value or the degree of the exponent. So just a polynomial check-in, um, which of the following is not a polynomial? So when you're looking at this, what you should be thinking about is things that aren't polynomials are when you're dividing by a variable, so for example, this one right here, A, which says negative X over two, that's completely fine. Um, for this one, these are all good, but this one, if you can see that, that says three divided by the quantity X minus five, so that would be no. What is the degree of the polynomial? So for this one, you always take the highest power if you're adding the polynomials. Like here, in this example, here we were multiplying them, that would be one and one. Whereas, let's see, that was a fifth degree. So in this problem, the highest degree polynomial is, looks like that's a three, that's a one, that's a five, two, four. So it's going to be a fifth degree polynomial. Um, which of the following is a polynomial? Well, this definitely is not a polynomial because it's a division by a variable. Also, this one is a division by a variable because that y to the negative one power also would be one over y. Um, let's see, this one looks like it's y squared to the one half, that cancels, that's okay. However, this says x to the one half power, which is the square root, and that's definitely not a polynomial. So the only one left, let's just check it, three, we have two plus one is three, fourth degree, there's an x to the zero power that we know is there, but we really don't, you know, write that, but the one that is a polynomial is c. For this problem here, what is the degree of the polynomial? So we've got a fourth degree, three plus one is four, two plus two is four, three plus two is five. So that's my that's the highest that I have, fourth degree, and so that's a fifth degree. Um, how many terms does this have? We have uh, terms, one, two, three, four, four terms. If x, f and g of x are two polynomials, which of the following is not a polynomial? So if you remember us talking about this, you can add polynomials, you can multiply polynomials and still get polynomials. You can subtract polynomials and still get polynomials, but you can't divide polynomials and still get a polynomial. So if you have a polynomial f of x divided by a polynomial g of x, this one is definitely not going to be a polynomial because anything on the denominator right here is going to give you a um, possible asymptote at the same time, if you were to cancel something out, that would give you a hole in your graph, which both value, both discontinuities mean that they would not be a polynomial. Um, standard form for a polynomial is where you start with the highest power and then everything is descending order after that. So in this problem, the highest power is five. So I'm looking for something that starts with the fifth power, which is, in this case, see this negative four? This is a positive four, so this is out. 12 is out. This one's out, and this is a negative four to x to the fifth, fourth, third, second, so it would be b. Which of the following polynomials has a degree four? So fourth, 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 this one's out. Uh, three terms, so that has more than three terms. That has three terms, that has three terms, and two variables, so this has x, x, that's just x, this has x and a y, so that would be c. Um, this one says, which of the following could be a graph? Now, what you need to remember is a polynomial is continuous. There's no, no sharp edges, there's no holes, there's no asymptotes. So obviously there's a break in my graph here. There's a huge break in my graph here. This one has a sharp edge, and this one is continuous, so it'd be d. Um, which of the following could be the graph? Well, there's a value, a break right here. So this is out. This is out because you have an asymptote that gives you a break. This one has a sharp edge that's out. And so B would be my continuous. And by the way, how many turns do I have? I have one turn, two turns, three turns. 
which most likely means this is an x to the fourth power, which means this is going to be an even, right? The power is even, so the end behavior would be up and then up, okay? Positive value. Um, multiplicities review, um, note that I have, these, this has already been factored for us, so that's all good. My zeros for this first problem right here, my zeros would be, let me move this over just a little bit. Um, my zeros would be negative six with a multiplicity of one, and it would be positive seven with a multiplicity of one, meaning this is to the one power, this is to the one power, which means that at negative six, my graph goes through, which it does. It also means at seven, my graph goes through, which it does. Um, for this problem here, I have negative six with the multiplicity of one, and I have seven with a multiplicity of two, which means at negative six, my graph goes through. It means at seven, my graph is tangent, which basically means it bounces off, okay? And this just tells you the different um, x-intercepts and how many times you're gonna see them crossing or going through. This one, uh, this one right here, this one has a uh, zero at negative six. So we have a zero at negative six with a multiplicity of two. We have a zero at seven with a multiplicity of one. So this one starts, this goes through six. It's going at, oh, sorry, at negative six, this has to bounce off because it's even. If the multiplicity is even, that means it's tangent. If the multiplicity is odd, that means that it goes through. For this problem here, we have um, a zero at negative six with a multiplicity of two, and we have a zero at seven with a multiplicity of two. So what that means is that at negative six, my graph is tangent because it's an even multiplicity, so it bounces off of there, it's tangent. And then at seven, it has a multiplicity of two that also bounces off. And remember, um, n minus one turns. So if my power, this is two plus one, which is three. So the power is x to the third power. So that means I'm gonna have two turns, okay? Um, I've got one turn and two turns. So that's x minus one, so three minus one, that's the number of turns that my graph is gonna have. So if this is an x to the fourth power, that means I'm gonna have three turns. So I've got one turn, two turns, three turns. That's what that means. And even powers are up, up. That's my end behavior. Um, if it's a power of three, that's your positive power of three. It's right arm up. It looks like that. This graph shows an eighth degree polynomial. So that means that I'm going to have eight, eighth degrees means that I'm going to have eight solution, eight zeros. But keep in mind, just because I have eight zeros doesn't mean that all my zeros are um, uh, real. I could have some imaginary zeros. In that case, they're not all gonna cross the x-axis. Um, but I do have a zero at negative 15, and it goes through, which means that my multiplicity is um, one. I do have a zero at negative 10, which means that my multiplicity has got to be even. So if it's odd or even. So that means there's two, two negative 10. So at negative 15, it's going through at negative 10, it's twice, so it's going to bounce off. So it's um, it's a uh, even number. At five, it goes. At negative five, it goes through. At zero, it goes through. And then at ten, positive ten, it bounces off. So I have an even number of multiplicities. And at fifteen, it goes through. So I have an odd number of multiplicities. But what you need to remember is re it's an eighth degree. So the two, two I've got. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are my those are my zeros. Um, what is the multiplicity of x equals five? Five is here, so that's gonna say. Now, be careful with this because we know that it's odd. It's an odd multiplicity. But look at what's happening to my graph. See how it's doing this? It's an if it was a um, like multiplicity of one, like see at five here. See how it goes straight through. That's what happens when you have a multiplicity of one right there. But it, at this five here, it kind of does this thing, right? Which means the multiplicity isn't gonna be, it is gonna be odd, but it's not gonna be one. It's more like a cubic because it kind of got, got, it's got that curve, right, of a cubic, okay? So um, 
so that would be fifth degree with all real number roots. The root at negative five has a multiplicity of two. Okay, so that's going to bounce off. So they want to know what's the multiplicity of five. We know it's a fifth degree, so that would be x to the fifth power. So let's just write this out. f of x equals, I know I'm going to have a fifth degree. Um, I've got negative five, so I would say like x plus five is to the second power. And then it doesn't look like I have any, because that's this one, the negative five right here, that's that one. It doesn't look like I have any other zeros other than this right here, which would confirm what my suspicions in that if I said x minus 5, this should be to the third power because 3 plus 2 is 5. Um, and so therefore, see that uh, it should say x equals 5 has a multiplicity of 3. Remember, it's got that little curve there like a cubic. That's what I'm talking about. Um, what is the minimum possible degree of the polynomial that could be graphed below? So if you're looking at this graph here, um, we have a 0 here at I don't know, negative five. So we have a negative five, zero. That has a multiplicity of one. I'm going to say we have a negative three with at least the minimum, a multiplicity of one. We go through zero once. So that's a zero with a multiplicity of one. We go through three here, and that's got a multiplicity of one. And I think that's a five. So we have a five, and that also goes through, and that's a multiplicity of one. So it looks like the minimum possible degree would be one, two, three, four, a fifth degree is what it looks like. And so the minimum possible degree um, definitely is a fifth degree. Okay, given the polynomial of degree six, so this is what you have to remember. If it's a six degree polynomial, um, which one of these could be the graph? Well. If it's even and it's a positive, um, and if it's positive, a degree of six, which of the following, but they didn't say it was positive or negative, did they? They just said it has a degree of six. There's no positive word in here. So that means that my graph is either going up like this or my graph is going down like this. So the possible graphs, but they have to have a degree of six, remember. Okay, so A is out. Um, this could be the graph. Remember, what is happening down here? Not sure. Remember with a six degree, we have five turns. So that's going to be one turn, two turns, three turns, four turns, five turns. That's what we're talking about. And it looks like on this one, it possibly could be E. Um, let's see here. One turn, uh, one turn, two turns, three turns, four, five. That could be more than one right here, six. So that's upside down. So it could be F. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I, I, B is out. It has too many terms because you can only have a f five terms. Um, let's see. One, two, something could be happening here. And then that, that could work. So C, um, F, E, uh, this is out because it's right arm up and behavior is up and then down. And then this one, let's see, here we got one turn, two turns, three turns, four, five, maybe there. Okay, so you've got like multiple turns here. You guys got to look at that and say, well, which ones could it be? Anything with this or this that doesn't have more than five turns. Um, find the indicated value of synthetic substitution. So all we're doing is plugging in the value and this is sort of like the factor theorem, basically, but they're not asking me if it's a factor or not. They're just saying, plug it in. Um, and because they use this word, synthetic, um, I'm going to try synthetic division because that's one option. The other option for synthetic substitution is to plug that value in here, where I'd say negative 3 to the second, or times 2 to the third power, minus 5 times 2 to the second power, plus seven, I ran out of room, hold on, plus seven times two, and then subtract nine. So I would do all of that, but, and then, you know, what's that? Eight times negative three, which is negative 24. Uh, four times negative five is negative 20. And then I would add 14, and then I would subtract nine. And so whatever that value is here for T of two, that's what I would get when I plug my values in for synthetic substitution. So let's try that and just make sure um, you would plug this in your calculator um, and 
at two. And oh, I want to I want to actually talk about. Um, I I know I've done a lot of um, I've done a lot of problems here that where I've showed you how to find the table on a TI eighty four, but I haven't done very many where I was showing you how to find the table or values on a TI Inspire. So I'm actually going to show you that because. Um, uh, Paulina, thank you so much for reminding me. Um, I, that is something that's actually really important that you do know how to do. So first thing we're going to do is I've got that equation. So I'm just going to, I got to find, um, go to menu. So I'm going to just do this so I can get my menu, add graph. And then you have this, this value here. So I've got negative three X squared. So I'm going to go, um, negative three X and then wait, is that squared? Hold on. That's cubed. So negative three X to the third power and then uh, minus five X squared. So I'm gonna go minus five X, oops, hello. So that's gotta be a three up there, but actually I forgot to move this off of the top. Okay, so then um, minus three X cubed, check. Minus five X squared. So I'm gonna go subtract five X squared. And then I'm going to go uh, plus 7x. So plus 7x and then minus 9. And then subtract 9, okay? And of course, I want to see what this looks like, right? So I would definitely press enter and then see the graph, which I can't see because it's so far away. But the point of me doing this, and I would need to shrink it down a little bit, but that's fine. The point of me doing this is to find the table. So then you're going to go to um, menu and I'm going to go to one of these values here, which is, oh, look, there's my table. And so I'm going to do a split screen table and there's my table of values. And so what the question was, was T of two. So what's happening? Let me shrink this down a little bit because I think you're missing part of it. There we go. All right. So I got to find out what's happening at positive two, well, it's negative 39. And so, you know, you can roll this up and down trying to find zeros. It looks like I do have a zero somewhere on the negative realm. Um, not sure where that is, but that's, that's how you would, that's how you do the table. You just go to menu, etc. So now I'm going to use a, a synthetic division to, uh, try to get the same answer. Um, I'm going to plug in the two and the values of the coefficients, which is negative three, negative five, seven, and then negative nine. And I'm gonna add down, which is negative three, multiply across, which is negative six, add down, which is negative 11, and then multiply across, which is negative 22, and negative two plus seven is negative 15. And negative 15 times two, which is negative 30, and negative 30 plus negative nine is negative 39, which is what I have. And so all this means here is number one, uh, we have a remainder, and our remainder is negative 39. So it, working this out, um, there's a couple of ways to actually write it out. So let's show you one way. One way to sh write this out would be um, as in polynomial form. So uh, actually that's a T of X is equal to, we'd have x minus two times our values here, which would be uh, our coefficients, which is negative three x squared minus 11 x minus 15. And then you would put the negative 39 right here on the end. So that would be um, negative 39, which is our remainder. Um, the other option for showing the answer the quotient, you know, the answer, is to go negative 3x squared minus 11x minus 15. And then you could write plus negative 39 over the divisor, which is um, x minus 2. Okay, both of those work. <clears throat> now, this is something new. It's pretty quick and easy, actually. Um, it says it's the intermediate value theorem. And it's it says if f is continuous, right, you know, along through, and on a, b, and is any number between f, a, and f of b inclusive, then there is at least one number, c, in the interval, a, b, such that f of c equals zero. What does that mean? It means that if you have a polynomial and it's continuous, okay, so you have a graph like this, if there's any two values where 
you get one positive value, see the five, and then one negative value, the negative three. You plug in two numbers that they give you. So if I plot, if I plot one, if I go f of, if, excuse me, if I go f of one, and get an answer in this for this problem, I get negative three, and then I get and I plot another point, which is going to be f of here, which is two, and I get five. So see how I have a one and a two here, and there's a in between. There's a value of zero. What that means right there is that my graph crosses the x-axis. At, at, I have a zero. So, and the only way that I would have a zero is if one of my answers is negative and one of my answers is positive. So that's what we're looking for. They're gonna give us two points and they're gonna give us an equation. So here's my equation. I wanna use the intermediate value theorem. The two points, that, the two coordinates I'm gonna give you is one and two. So this is a graph that looks like this. Here's one and then here's two. If my if I get a positive value when I plug in one or a negative and the other one is the opposite, then I should my graph should cross the x-axis. And so there will be a zero between one and zero, one and two. That's my intermediate value theorem. So we're gonna plug in one. So we get two times one to the third power minus six times one plus one. So that's one third, one of the third power is one times two is two. Two minus six is negative four. Negative four plus one, I get negative three, okay? Now I'm gonna plug in uh, two to my equation. So I'm gonna go two times x cubed. So two times two to the third power minus six times two, add one. So I get eight times two, which is 16. Uh, 16 minus 12, which is four. Four plus one, which is five. So it equals five. So what this means is at one, I got a point of negative three. So one, ne two, three. So there's a point here at one, negative three. And at two, I got five. So there's a value up here. So this point is two, five. And this point here is one comma negative three. It, what that means is, is that some, that my graph must cross here at zero in between one and two, because one of my one of my answers was negative and one of my answers is positive. So that means that if it goes from negative to positive, it has to cross the x-axis somewhere in between one and two. So that's what the intermediate value theorem says. If it's continuous on one and two and f of one and f of two, doesn't matter what the values are, but they have opposite signs one's negative, one's positive, there is a value C, this is our C value, in the interval that F of C is equal to zero. And this is the reason is, is for the intermediate value theorem. Um, here's a problem here, it says plot the graph of this, find all the values of X that make P of X equal to zero. So they want all the factors. So if I was using the rational root theorem, I'd have P of X over Q of X. And then my factors of 14 are gonna be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus seven, and plus or minus 14. This is all over the, uh, the uh, coefficient of the highest power, which is x cubed. So that's just gonna be plus or minus one. So my answers, the way you would write this um, in a solution, this is not my answer, this is just setting it up for the answer. This means that my possible rational roots are plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus seven, and plus or minus 14. And so then, so that would be all the values that I'm gonna plug in. I'm gonna try synthetic substitution, synthetic division. Um, different people call it different things. Um, so we're gonna try, uh, I'm gonna try, let's see, the values are one, negative four, negative five, and 14. So I'm gonna try two, see what happens. I get one, two, I get negative, add down, I get negative two. Multiply across, I get negative four. Add down, I get negative nine. That's not gonna give me a zero. So now I'm gonna try negative two. Okay, so plug in a negative two and see if that works for me. Add down, multiply across, add down. Multiply across, that's 12. Add down, that's seven. Multiply across, that's negative 14. Add down, which is zero. Which means that x plus two, which is right here, that's from there, 
times, these are my coefficients for my solution for my division, meaning synthetic division is where you have to take out the variables. But don't forget to show your solution in factored form. You have to put them back in. So this is, if it was an x cubed and I divided by an x, now that my this value is going to be x squared. So I have 1x squared minus 6x and then plus 7 equal to 0. And so I'm going to factor that. I get x plus 2. I get x uh, minus, oh boy, let's see. That actually, does that factor? I don't think that factors. Um, <clears throat> And let's use the uh, discriminant test, which says b squared, which is six, negative 6 squared, uh, which is 36, minus 4 times a times c. So, well, wait a minute. 36 minus 36 minus 28 is 8, which is not a perfect square. So that's not going to factor nicely. It'll factor, but not the way we want it to factor. Um, so we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, I mean, sorry, we're going to use the quadratic formula, and I'm going to finish it off here. So this is 36 minus 4ac, so I'm just going to do this, <clears throat> 6 plus or minus all over 2a, and so I'm going to get 6 plus or minus 36 minus 28 is 8, so the square root of 8 all over 2, so the square root of 8 is actually square root of 4 times square root of 2, which is 2 root 2. So I have 6 plus or minus 2 root 2 um, all over 2. So that 2 is going to divide into both of my numerators, leaving me with 3 plus or minus uh, root 2. So plot the graph, find all the values of x. So they don't want me to write it in any form. They just want me to find the values of x. Those are my zeros. So you would say x is at negative 2, and then I would say comma 3 plus or minus the square root of 2, and these are all the values of x that would make p of x equal to 0. We, they're not asking me to write it in factored form. This is something that you learned yesterday and um, on Wednesday, and this is where you would, if they asked me to put it in factored form, I'd write it like this. Watch. 3 minus, and then I'd go 3 plus the square root of 2, and then it would be x minus the quantity 3 minus the square root of 2. And then, of course, I would rewrite that to be x plus 2 times x minus 3 minus the square root of 2, and then x minus 3, and then plus the square root of 2. So if they ask me to write it in factored form as a linear um, equation, this, is the, this would be it right here. This is the linear form linear form. But if they just ask me right here to find the values of x that make p of x equal to 0, these are the values of x right here. Um, again, same type of problem. Find all the values of x that make p of x equal to 0. Um, oh, and they asked me to plot the graph for that. So you can use that. You can do that on your calculator um, for this. Okay, so we're going to go, uh, we're going to use the rational root theorem again, p of x over q of x. And the values of 48, there's a lot. Um, I would say we're going to go with plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, 8, because I'm, I'm writing all the factors of 48, right? So there's quite a lot of them. Um, plus or minus, what, um, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, we've got, what, 24, and we have 48, and um, hopefully I'm not missing any. Um, and this is all over uh, plus or minus 1. All right. And so my values that I'm going to start trying are, let's see, what are my numbers? So we've got 1, we have negative 4, we have negative 5, <clears throat> and 48. I'm going to try, I'm just going to start with 2 and see where I get with that. So I have 1, 2, add down, I get negative 2. Multiply across, I get negative 4. Add down, I get negative 9. Multiply across, I get negative 18, which is not enough. Um, if then, let's try a higher number, such as 6. So if I were to uh, multiply 6. So add down, uh, multiply across, add down, I get 2. Multiply across, I get 12. I get 7, uh, 7 times 6 is 42, not 48. So I'm going to pause for a second and think that now I'm going to try negative 3, see what happens. Add down is 1, multiply across, I get negative 3. Let's see. 
And let's see, add down, I get negative seven. Multiply across, I get 21. Um, so then, um, okay, where am I at? 21 minus five, what's that, 16? And then 16 times negative three is negative 48. Ne 48 and negative 48 is zero. Which means that I have x plus three times the quantity and then, let's see, this is x cubed, so that means my first term is going to be 1x squared minus 7x and then positive 16. And then, let's see, um, to make 16, that would be 1 times 16, uh, 4 times 4, and 2 times 8, none of which is going to add up to be 7, which means that I'm going to need to use the quadratic formula again to try to figure out what the rest of the values are that make p of x equal to 0. And so we're going to use it right here. And uh, x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 49, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. And that's going to be x equals 7 plus or minus, um, we have 49 minus 16 times 4, which is 64, is negative 15. Oh, that's imaginary. So the square root of negative 15, and this is 15, and this is all over 2. And so that those are my values. So I've got the values that make p of x equal to 0 are x equals to negative 3 and 7 plus or minus i root 15 all over 2. And so these are the three values that would make, that are my factors for this. These are, that's what make those equal to 0. Um, this one says, find all the factors of the given polynomial. I do notice one thing, that this is x to the fourth power, which basically means that not only have to, do I have to go through synthetic division once, but I do have to do it twice. So um, my rational root theorem which just means my factors that I could try are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and plus or minus 8, all over the 1 here. So these are my values. So in doing this right here, um, we have a 1, 4, 3, negative 3, negative 14, and then negative 8. So the values that we're going to try start with 2. I get 2, add 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 12 minus 3, 9, 9 times 2 is 18, um, 18 minus 14 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8, oh. Yes. Okay, so that means that we have x minus 2 times this, which is going to be x to the third plus 6x squared plus 9x and then add 4. And so because it's still x cubed, I need to use, I need to use synthetic division again. And so for this one, um, these are the factors for the rational root theorem, which are just plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. Because now I have a new value here, right? Not, I'm not using negative 8 anymore. I'm using 4. So I have 1, 6, 9, and 4. And something to consider here, people, is that these are all positive values, which means that if I choose a positive value here, these values are just going to keep going up and up and up. So I do want a negative value. So I'm going to just try negative 2. Add down, multiply across. Add down, I get 4. Multiply across, I get negative 8, add down, which is 1, multiply across, I get negative 2, um, adding down, I get 2, which is not a 0. So two, negative 2 didn't work. So now I'm going to try negative 1. Let's see if that works. So try negative 1, and I add down, I get 1, negative 1, 6 minus 1 is 5, 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. 9 minus 5 is 4. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. I get 0. We have our second 0. So the way you're going to start writing this, though, is don't forget your first factor, which is x minus 2. So it's going to be x minus 2 times my second factor, which is 1, uh, x plus 1. And then this is going to be uh, times x squared plus 5x plus 4 equals zero. And so what's happening here is I'm going to try to factor this, which I believe it does factor x minus two, x plus one, and then this is going to be x plus one and x plus four, which will add up to be five. And then rewriting this is x minus two, 
times x plus 1 quantity squared times x plus 4 is equal to 0. So what I know is this. I know that I have zeros. So my zeros are 2, negative 1, and negative 4. So for 2, this is 2 to the 1 power, so I have a multiplicity of 1. I have negative 1 twice, so that has a multiplicity of 2. And negative 4, I just have 1 time because that's to the 1 power, so I have a multiplicity of 1. And so if I were graphing this, this is what it would look like. Um, at 2, 1, 2, I have a 0. My y-intercept is negative 8, so don't lose that because that helps you know guide everything, so that's a 2. Um, I have a value at negative 1, I have a 0, and at negative 4, I also have a 0. Okay, so um, going back to the top, this is an x to the 4th power that's positive, which means my end behavior is positive, positive, which is both going up, which means the ends of my graph are both going up like that. Um, everything's going through except at negative 1, that bounces off, so right here. So it means that this is going through here. At some point, it's got to go through negative 1, but it's going to bounce off negative 1, come down here, and then come back up, and then go through my graph like that. So finding all the zeros that uh, of the given polynomial, these are my zeros, 2, negative 1, and negative 4, and, this is, and then this is what the graph actually looks like. Um, using the remainder theorem to find the remainder quickly, um, you just plug the value 3 in. So this is as if this was set equal to 0. You don't have to do long division. That's not required. Um, you definitely can do long division, but the remainder theorem just says you plug this value in. So the value that you're going to plug in is x equals 3. So you would put a 3 here. And so that's going to be um, 3 to the 4th power minus 10 times 3 to the 2nd power plus 9. So for me, I would just plug this in my calculator to get the answer. 3 to the 4th power I know is 81. This is, so we have got 81 minus 10 times 9, so that's minus 90, and then plus 9. So 81 plus 9 is 90. 90 minus 90 is 0. And so what does that mean? What did that just tell us? So what it, what it means is that, um, f of 3 is equal to 0, which means I have no remainder. So if I say f of 3 is equal to 0, and that 0 is my remainder, at 3 comma 0, I have an x-intercept. So I have my remainder is 0. That's the answer. For this problem here, again, you know, think about if you are using synthetic division or if you were using long division. If I was using synthetic division, do you see this? This is to the 51 power. Why would I do that, right? That's that's like doing this. You've set this equal to zero and you get plug in one, and then you would have one, and then you would have 50, you know, zero, 51, zero, 50 zeros, and then you would have the last number is 51. There's this was just ridiculous to put this in synthetic division or use the re, you know, or use um long division. Because the remainder theorem, you set this equal to 0, you get x equals 1. You're going to plug that value in because what they're asking is what is happening at 1. Is it a point or is it a 0? That's what they're asking. So you're basically just going to go 1 to the 51 power plus 51. So 1 to the 51 power is still 1. 1 plus 51 is 52. So what that means, these three dots mean therefore, at f of 1... My answer is 52, so that's a point, com 1, comma, 52. So my remainder is 52, which, yes, it's a remainder, but at the same time, it's also a point on my graph. Um, this is just asking you, this part of your homework, um, sketch a graph, and, that's, and this is like the last part of your homework. So your job is to sketch a graph um, with a 6-degree function, so that's going to be x to the 6th power. You have four real zeros. Um, so that means that I could graph this, you know, you're just making up something. We know that x to the 6th power means it has something like this, right? It could also be negative, so it could also go down, down. But four real zeros, so I could have um, 1, 2, 3, 
and then four. So one, two, three, four real zeros. But you need to keep in mind that if it's to the sixth power, you actually have five terms. So you need to make your graph such that you have five turns. If by just looking at it like this, I have one term, two turns, three turns. That's not five. So somewhere along the road, and I'm just gonna do it right here, you need to add in some additional terms. So I would just go up, down, up, like that. And that's completely fine. A cubic function, so that's x to the third power, with two distinct real zeros. So a cubic function should look right arm up and then left arm down. So it should look something like that. But if I have two zeros, right, that's just one zero, uh, if I go through this like that, now I have three zeros, right? But I only have two real zeros. So what that means is I need to modify this graph such that um, it bounces off somewhere. So I'm going to say that it's got to be tangent at some point. So we're going to go, I'm just going to go through here and then have one zero right here where that goes up. A quartic. Um, a quartic is an x to the fourth power. Again, up, up, or down, down. I have no real zeros. So that means all of my zeros are imaginary. So that means that when I graph this, right, it's got to be up, up, like this, or down, down. But it means that I don't have any real zeros. So my graph is not crossing the x-axis at all. And so that's like a, a no value there. So what my graph could possibly look like is I've got a quartic, which means I have three turns. So one, two, three. Three turns, there's my graph. Doesn't cross the x-axis, I have no real zeros. Um, the last problem is sort of a challenge problem. And I really like this problem. Um, this also is on your SATs, and I've seen that before. Um, also possibly on your test, so you do need to know this. Um, we're gonna do this by synthetic division. So we're gonna box this up like this. This is what I want here, two minus i. I wanna know that this is a zero. So I'm gonna do this by synthetic division. So we go four, three, two, one, zero, that works. So I'm gonna go one, leave some space, uh, negative four, and then I've got seven, negative eight, and then one. And so I'm gonna draw this line here, and we're gonna do it the same way we would do normally synthetic division, but it has imaginary numbers. So we're gonna add down one, Multiply across, I get two minus i. I'm gonna add down. So negative four plus two is negative two, and then minus i. Now I need to multiply across. So I'm gonna go over here into my, like my little workspace, and I'm gonna multiply across, okay? So I'm gonna go two minus i, and then negative two minus i. Okay, so we get two times negative two is negative four, minus two i, plus 2i, that's good, those cancel, and then minus minus, so that's going to be positive i squared. Well, i squared is negative 1, so this is negative 4 minus 1, which is negative 5. So when I multiply 2 minus i times negative 2 minus i, I get negative 5. So again, I'm going to add down, I get 2, multiply across, so now I have 4 minus 2i, and now I'm going to add down negative 8, add four is negative four, and then subtract two i. So now I have to multiply across again. So I'm gonna go into more workspace, I'm gonna do this over here, and I'm gonna go two minus i times negative four minus two i. So this times this is negative eight uh, minus four i plus four i. Yes, they're gonna cancel, that's a good thing. And then negative i times negative two i is positive 2i squared. I, I squared is negative 1. So this is going to be 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So I have negative 8 minus 2 is negative 10. So then when I multiplied this times this, I got negative 10. And negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9. So therefore, is this a 0? No, it's not a 0 because I have a remainder. <laughs> okay, so uh, graphing polynomials with multiplicity, these were all the things that we've done. Um, we just touched on those today. There's a review and our homework is page 539. Um, these are the problems. There's what, four, eight problems. And then you have a quiz review um, that's due on the day of the quiz. You're, some, some people have a quiz on Monday. Some people have, excuse me, some people have a quiz on Tuesday after Martin Luther King Day and some people have a quiz on 
Wednesday. So that's when your quiz review is due, um, preferably before you take the quiz. All right. Hey, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your night.